This is an introduction to my latest project and yes this is a paper tape punch and reader. It's actually a Trend 612 and it was an accessory that was originally designed as an add-on to the Trend ESR615 teleprinter. So this dates back to the early to mid 60s. So very nice punch and uh, paper tape reader. This particular unit was sent to me by a good friend. He knows I'm interested in this sort of thing, so he sent me this. Um, this, however, is not my actual project. I'll introduce what the project is, but I will need this uh, in order to complete the project. So I'll just get onto the bench what I'm going to be looking at over the next few videos, and then we'll come back and look at this unit in more detail and uh, show how it works and um, what its capabilities are. So this is the project, or rather five of these is the project. We believe that they're faulty and uh, in case you haven't recognised them, they are the power supplies out of Trend 612 punches. Now, as I said, as far as we know, these don't work, but um, because, as you can see, it's a bit of a, uh, an unusual arrangement in that it's all kind of hardwired together, it's very difficult to get out of the machine. But also it is not just a power supply, there are some control elements in here as well for the uh, punch motors and, and, and uh, other various bits and pieces. So this is largely controlled by the control board on the punch itself via a few connectors. So really it's trying to figure out whether the faults lie within the power supply units themselves or within the control unit. But uh, as ever, you all start with the power supply, so this is what we're looking at first. There's a very little information about these units and uh, in particular um, we couldn't find any schematics or any uh, technical documentation that was uh, of any help. So the first thing I've done is taken one of these supplies and I've completely dismantled it. So I've taken it apart into not quite its component parts but certainly it's now in far more parts than it was uh, when it arrived. So the reason for doing this is because of the nature of the uh, way it's all put together, the only real way to properly fault find on these is to un firstly understand them, but also I wanted to uh, generate some documentation that would help me, but may also help other people that uh, have these that need repairing. So what I've done so far is reverse engineer this supply and control system to generate a proper schematic for it. So this is the schematic for uh, both the main part of the supply and also this small switching part that sits within the supply. This actually sits uh, on the end of the main board, uh, but it's in a separate box and it generates the uh, low voltage and minus voltage supplies. So having a schematic obviously, especially in something that is a range like this, is going to be uh, a big help. And I then translated that into an exact duplicate of the actual PCB layout. So what I have now is proper documentation for this and what I can do now and what I'll be doing over the next few videos is going through this and trying to identify where the fault exists in these units. And of course having a working unit uh, that I've just demonstrated means that I can plug these into that unit, get the proper control signals going to it once I've determined what they are, I can simulate that unit uh, using switches or, or whatever to drive the units um, independently. So I won't need to keep putting them uh, into the uh, working machine. Uh, and once I've done that, of course, I'll be able to start figuring out uh, where the faults are. So that's what I'll be doing over the next few videos. If you do want to see more of the punch and uh, see it working, then uh, please leave a comment. Uh, otherwise, the next few videos will be concentrating on getting these supplies up and working. Just a quick note and a response to a question I've been asked several times. Anyone that's been working with paper tape punches for any length of time knows that once you've got a paper tape and it's unravelled, it's a bit of a, a handful to rewind. And if you've been watching my videos, then you'll know I deal with paper tapes quite a lot. And the question I was asked is, do I have a, a, a winding machine to rewind these once I've used them? And the answer is, yes I do, but I hardly ever use it. And so what I thought I'd do is just quickly show how I rewind these tapes. 
I'm sure that most people that use them have their own methods, but I just thought I'd show this partly to answer the question, but also some people might find it useful. So what I use is this. It's um, my paper tape winder. It looks uh, fairly simple, and it is. It's just a piece of delrin rod with a narrow slit cut in it. And of course, what I do with this is put it into one of these. So I'll just put it into the drill. So once it's in the drill, uh, all you need to do is put the end of the paper tape into the slot. So that, as I say, it's a very narrow slot. It's just slightly wider than the tape. And then once you've done that, you just power up the drill and wind the tape. So this is 4K basic, so it's quite long. But even so, it only takes a few seconds to wind it. And there we go. So that's wound. Just now put an elastic band around it or a sticker, and it's as simple as that. Um, if you do it by hand, uh, it takes forever, but this is, as you can see, a nice quick method. Um, if you've got 8K basic even or something bigger, then it still works, and it just takes a few seconds to wind the tapes, and it's um, I say a bit of a, uh, a pain having to do it by hand, but this saves an awful lot of time.